Hi, I'm going to be presenting a case study today based on a fictional bike share company called Cyclistic. Cyclistic's information is based on the real bike sharing company Divi Bikes in the city of Chicago. I'll be acting as a data analyst on the marketing team, and what I want to do is help design a new strategy to convert more casual riders into annual members. I was given three business questions. The main ones are, how do annual members and casual riders use the bike shares differently? Why would casual riders buy an annual membership? And how can Cyclistic use digital media to influence casual riders to become members? My starting hypothesis is that members and casual customers have fundamentally different purposes for using the bike share, and it might be difficult to convert casual riders into members. But let's look at what the numbers tell us. First of all, how is the business doing right now? As you look at these statistics, I'd like to mention that the data was checked by me for completeness and accuracy and is representative of all the cyclistic bike rides from July 2021 through June 2022, which is the most recent information. Although Cyclistic is a fictional company, the data was collected by Motivate International, which operates the city of Chicago's Divi bike sharing service. It included all information about ride details, such as the starting time and ending time, the station name, the types of memberships, etc. And the data was cleaned and organized by me before analysis. So how do casual riders and subscribing members differ in the way they use the bike share? Here we see that members take the most rides at 57% of the total trips, while casual users make up 43% of the total. The thing to notice here is that that is a very large pool of users, 43%, that we can potentially convert to membership and the focus of our job today. However, it was casual riders that spent the most time on the bikes, at an average of 30 minutes a ride. Durations were less than half of that for the members at an average of 13 minutes a ride. What this suggests is that the members are using the bikes for task-driven purposes, such as commuting or running errands, while casual riders are using them for longer pleasure trips or even sightseeing. The busiest time of day for both members and casual riders was after lunch, peaking at about 5 p.m. for both. But note the uptick on the blue members line in the morning between 7 and 9 as well. This further points to commuter bike use for members. The busiest weekdays for members were Monday through Friday, suggesting again that these are local commuters. Their numbers fall off somewhat during the weekend. The busiest, busiest weekdays for casual riders were Saturday and Sunday, suggesting that these customers are using the bike shares for weekend recreation. The busiest season for both of the types of customers was the summer, although member numbers remain high through October. This suggests that members are using the bike share for the entire season of bikeable weather in Chicago, which is normally late March through November while casual riders are renting the bikes primarily in the summer months of June, July, and August. Again, most likely for pleasure. The most popular type of bike for both types of customers was the Classic. If the ride was by electric bikes, then more members than casual riders chose that type. The story being told by the data is that members are primarily using the bike share for commuting and tasks, while casual riders are using it mostly on the weekend for longer rides and recreation. This may make it difficult to convert casual riders into annual members because their behavior is so different. After analyzing the differences between member and casual rider usage, I would recommend the following strategies. Implement a seasonal membership program to encourage more frequent riding during the warmer months when casual riders are most active. Because the marketing team wanted to use digital media, we could use 
influencers on social media platforms such as Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, Twitch, and TikTok to document their bike share trips around Chicago and showcase their favorite locations and activities. These local influencers can help to combat the kind of touristy image that cyclista can have and show that it's for city people as well. We could also market cyclistic as a solution for locals who only want to bike during the good weather period of Chicago and don't want to store, maintain, or worry about the theft of their own bikes when they're out and about. And lastly, electric bikes may be an area of growth for cyclistic. We could focus on the benefits of electric bikes and show that how they can be safely ridden and enjoyed for their speed and lower physical demand. We should note that additional data, such as the percentage of casual riders who actually live locally and those who are out of town visitors would be very helpful. And determining the most popular starting and ending trip locations would be key so that cyclistic could identify areas where bikes could be added. All right, we're ready to summarize. Let's start by remembering the business questions we were answering. First of all, how do annual members and casual riders use the bike share differently? The analysis found that members primarily use the bike share for commuting and tasks, while casual riders use it mostly on the weekends for longer rides and recreation. Secondly, why would casual riders buy an annual membership and how can we convert them? While it may be difficult to convert out of town visitors, if we could identify local casual riders and offer a seasonal good weather subscription, primarily in the summer, that has great potential to increase membership. Finally, how can Cyclistic use digital media to influence casual riders to become members? Using digital media platforms like Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, Cyclistic can hire local content creators to document bike share trips around Chicago. They could highlight their favorite spots, hidden gems that they know about, or fun weekend itineraries, which could attract new customers and combat the tourist-only image that Cyclistic suffers from. I think combining these strategies could have a very large impact on Cycl Cyclistic's member conversions and its future growth as a company. And I'm very excited to see that growth come. Thank you for your attendance and let me know if you have any questions.